back to News Geelong. We now head back to Simmons Stadium in the inner sanctum, talking to winning coach Chris Scott. To be honest, I'm not privy to all the information and, and the, um, the technicalities around um, our argument. I leave that to, to Neil Baum and, and to others. Um, but their information uh, that's been conveyed to me is that they're very confident. Our legal representation uh, is very confident. Um, and and I'll, I'll trust that. No, it's not a free hit. No, not at all. No, I mean, you won't risk another week. But yeah, you'll risk, right. yeah, but you'll risk 80 carryover points, and that's not insignificant. Yeah, um, the, the, the system is stacked against you in that regard. Um, it is a big risk for a player of James' quality to be carrying 80 or 90 carryover points um, into the last part of the year. So, no, I refute the assertion that it's without risk. I haven't thought too much about it. Um, if yeah, I mean, it's, it's as close as I can imagine to there being a fair bump. Um, and if, if it's not fair, um, then I think by extension we're really saying you can't bump. Uh, yeah, I was a little bit surprised, but I think with these things you learn um, not to be too shocked or outraged because there's, the, the rules are so grey. We're talking split seconds and millimetres between perfectly legal and well executed uh, and illegal and punishable. I think it's extremely difficult on the players. Yeah, we're very confident that Corey will be OK. Um, and, and Chapman, I, I can't really shed any light on the issue, unfortunately. I'm, I'm not going to say that I'm very confident again, because uh, I've just been saying that every week. Uh, and it's clearly a more complicated issue than was first thought. Uh, I can categorically tell you it's not um, a severe hamstring strain. Um, it's a more complicated issue that has just grumbled along and has been at about 95% for, for three weeks now, so um, potentially there's a, another course of action that we need to take which might make him um, questionable for this week, um, but I'm just not in a position to confirm that just yet. No, 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 no. The, the um, more of a traditional rehab where he might go through a process of strengthening um, that, that hamstring. It's, it's probably more of a, a tendon issue than a muscular issue, but even now I'm delving into issues that I'm not quite sure about, so I probably shouldn't speculate even more. Does he ever sit back with it? Does he, has just no, it's, re it's really strange, Nick. He, he, we didn't think he'd miss a week. Uh, he, he trained the last session before uh, the game against the Bulldogs um, and just didn't quite come up. And, and Unless we're absolutely sure, we just don't play those sort of guys. Uh, he got through the next week fine, got to the last session and just had a little bit of an awareness again. Same thing happened last week. Um, so clearly we're just not going to roll through the same process and keep hoping for the best. Um, there needs to be another uh, intervention. So it's frustrating for Paul, um, it's frustrating for us, but um, the most important thing is that we get him completely right and he's ready um, to play a long stretch of footy when he does come back. I wish I hadn't have said it was a tendon <laughs> issue because I don't really know that the, the medical staff could hear this and think, you fool, that's not that at all. So um, I know it's distal, if that helps. So it's closer to the tendon um, around the knee um, than the belly of the muscle. But no, I'm, I've, I've made a horrible hash of this. They're going to be furious with me. Yeah, I thought their form against Frio um, was very good at times, you know, exceptional. To be that far down against Fremantle and to come back um, is exceptional form. I thought they were uh, very, very good against Essendon at times. Um, and really, we make our assumptions on the opposition um, given their best football. Um, we would assume, assume that they're going to play um, like they did in patches against Essendon and St Kilda and Colin, uh, Fremantle when they were playing well um, for all four quarters this week against us. So that makes them a daunting opposition. Uh, mildly surprised, to be honest. Um, we always were confident that Maddie could play a variety of roles for us. It's just the way the cards have fallen for the last couple of years, that's tended to, to mean he's more of a forward. Um, but yeah, he had a fantastic pre-season, he was disappointed in his year last year, he was aware that we were going to look to promote some younger types that played in a similar position to him, um, which provided an opportunity, it meant that he could push further up the field, um, and he's taken that opportunity with both hands. He, um, he adds a slightly different look to our midfield, he's certainly going to play forward for us at times as well, um, but he finds a footy, he uses it really well, he's a, he's a really um, smart, natural footballer, Stokesy, so. You know, we're only seven rounds in, so there's a bit of work to do, and he's got to keep improving. But um, we're very, very, very pleased with his progress. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, it is. And hopefully, that's the way it works with all our players, even the really young ones as well. Um, they're aware of their strengths and weaknesses more than we are, 
Um, and, and these things, I wouldn't even call them a negotiation. I mean, we're, we're really um, working to support them. Um, but obviously, not every player can get um, what they're after all the time. The, the, the priorities for the team have to come first. But um, you know, where their wishes and ours are, are pretty aligned, it becomes a pretty simple discussion. Yeah, we were very fortunate to um, have a, an understanding surgeon, or probably uh, an understanding surgeon's mother, who performed the surgery on Mother's Day. Um, probably before even a few of us at the club realised that it was going to happen. Um, he. Uh, tells us that the surgery went extremely well and the prognosis is somewhere between four to six weeks and uh, I think from that you can take that given our history it'll be closer to six than four. Was that to have a place or what sort of surgery? Yeah again I hate these questions because I get mocked by the medical people but uh, yeah he had a he had a fracture in the clavicle and he had a plate um, put over that to, to strengthen it and help it heal a little bit quicker. So sometimes those guys get back um, within three or four weeks. Um, we're not even going to test those boundaries. Oh, not really, because Taylor um, is, a, is a very flexible player. He has got some kudos for playing as a defensive midfielder, and, and that's justified. Um, we regard him as um, someone who can help our offence through the midfield as well with his speed and ball use. Um, but predominantly he's been a small defender for us. So um, we don't have one player that can fulfil all those roles for us. But we, we're really pleased with Jackson Thurlow's uh, debut on the weekend. Um, Cam Guthrie's come back and we've always felt that um, he's very close to being in our best 22 irrespective of who's available. So you know, those two guys are the obvious ones that spring to mind. Yeah. I mean, we try to train them that way. We, we look at virtually all our key position players as just that, guys that can play either end. And I think with the way that teams rotate these days, you can uh, often end up with situations that weren't exactly, exactly planned. So flexibility in your players and the ability to play both ends if you end up there is really important. And, um, you know, Tom started as a forward, um, so you know, he knows how to do that. Harry's an exceptional contested mark, so yeah, we're, we're quite pleased with the way they're going, but I wouldn't read too much into um, why or how that's happening. We're so looking forward to getting Hamish back and Nathan Vardy as well. Nathan Vardy will play again in the VFL this week, probably the week after as well, and then we'll start to consider him for senior selection. Um, Hamish is probably about two weeks away from playing uh, in the VFL, uh, and Dawson Simpson's already back. so. Um, hopefully we can finally start to, to use our um, big men um, as a unit of five or six rather than just relying on the two who are doing a pretty good job at the moment. Two as well, uh, that's my understanding. Um, at this sort of end stage of the rehab it can be a little bit fluid depending on how he gets through the more intense work but yeah, the, the, um, the plan is certainly for him to play pre-buy. Obviously have a buy in, is it a month, five weeks? Um, so that will come into our thinking as well. Um, but, but Mark's on a very um, specific, individually tailored program. Thanks for that, Chris. Back to you in the studio, Rollo. Thank you, Alex, for another comprehensive sporting roundup. And thank you for being with us on this week's edition of News Geelong. Don't forget tomorrow morning on this channel at 8 a.m. to join the ladies of GDFL Netball for all the latest in that great sport, fastest growing sport in Victoria, to be followed by the boys. Well, apart from Eric Nichols, who is a man, on the GDFL footy show with mine host Digital Dick being joined at the umbilical cord with his little insect mate Grubby Cations. Might have a special OAM guest on the program. Great viewing and the way to start your Saturday in a very bright ray of sunshine. To all the volunteers out and about performing valuable support functions around our various communities, hope you've enjoyed National Volunteers Week and we continue to applaud the great week you and millions like you around our great country continue to do. So to you, this week, take your time and smell the flowers. Thank you for tuning in this evening. From all the team at News Geelong, enjoy your week, stay safe and a very good night.